If there is one story that best illustrates why the Boy Scouts of America is facing bankruptcy and thousands of lawsuits, this could be it. Four boys molested at a Boy Scouts camp in Kalamazoo County by a volunteer with a criminal history of sexual assault. One of those boys, just eight years old, victimized after the Boy Scouts National Office was told that the volunteer had sexually assaulted an 11-year-old. Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker spoke to two of the victims, and he has our special report tonight, Scouts Dishonor. Across the country, 82,000 men have filed claims against the Boy Scouts for sexual abuse. The state attorney general says 5,000 of those claims have some kind of ties to Michigan, dwarfing what happened in the Catholic Church. What better place for a boy to learn about the outdoors than Camp Ben Johnston? Canvas tents and cabins scattered among 64 acres of beech, oak, and maple on Sherman Lake near Augusta. It hosted more than 35,000 scouts before closing in 1985. Among them, a new scout, an 11-year-old Weebelow from Battle Creek Troop 306. Perhaps that is what made me kind of an easy target. I was new to that troop, didn't have a lot of connections within it already, you know, somewhat of an uh, outsider. On his very first night at camp in July 1982, the boy curled up in his sleeping bag in his pajamas. About ready to fall asleep, he would later testify when Boy Scouts volunteer David Harder crawled into his canvas tent. It started with tickling. Quote, he asked me if I trusted him a few times and I said yes because I was sort of scared, the boy later testified. And then he testified, Harder molested him. Harder told him it was their secret. That victim, now 49, does not want to be identified. Obviously, as any one in that situation would, you know, question themselves, hey, what did I do? You know, what was I doing to provoke this? After we got home, I was questioning him, you know, how did it go? And then he started to open up about it. He goes, well, you know, Mom, um, David's gay. And I thought, what? How would you know? And then he just blurted out what had happened to him. And you could have knocked me over with a feather. I mean, I was devastated from that moment on. The mom immediately called her son's troop leader, who called Camp Director Dan Colquett the same day. The next morning, the troop leader, Camp Director, and mom met at Speed's restaurant in Battle Creek. Police reports show that the National Boy Scouts office immediately told local leaders how to respond. It was the decision of their legal counsel that being that there were no proofs against Harder and that they did not want to damage the reputation of the Boy Scouts or Harder, that they would wait until the camp let out for the summer before approaching him, according to the report. A decision was made to closely monitor the activities of Harder. The report goes on to say that the camp director stated he had been advised by his supervisors and legal counsel that he would neutralize the situation and keep it quiet. That, to me, wasn't acceptable at all. I mean, if it had happened to his child. About a day after you reported it to him is when he molested another boy. And uh, I didn't know that, no. That's very upsetting. And now that child has to suffer as well. Yeah, see, it could have been prevented and it wasn't. Then I wouldn't have to be sitting here and wouldn't be going through this. Did you know that? No, I did not. It was Ken Struble, then an eight-year-old Cub Scout who was victimized by Harder the day after the volunteer was reported. It's been nearly 40 years since he has talked about what happened. I only get little fragments of memories. He remembers being afraid of another boy at camp, which is what led him to spend nights in a trailer where Harder was staying and where Harder molested him. Harder had set up a dark room in the trailer where he developed photos he took of Scout groups and sold them for 50 cents each. He had his disguise. He had where he can get close. They knew they had a loose predator there, and they let it go. It's like letting a lion out in a zoo. What are you going to do? Just sit there and let it gobble the people up? You know, hurt people? It was not the most pleasant. It was probably my lowest point of my 50 years in scouting. Dan Colquette, the camp director, was in his late 20s, just starting his career in the scouts. Harder had come to his camp highly recommended, already an assistant scoutmaster with Weeblos Troop Number 306 out of Battle Creek. He wasn't on my camp staff. He was a volunteer of the camp property. 
He says he had no idea at the time about Harder's criminal background, a conviction in 1967 for molesting and taking naked photographs of a 14-year-old boy. There must have been some kind of background check because at times we would get names kicked back. He disputes the police report's timeline. There was a, a kid named <laughs> whose mom you met at Speed's yeah. restaurant. Oh, God, was that where it was? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Who um, told you that her son had been molested. Right. And according to the police report, you contacted the Boy Scouts. The national office. Well, my boss. Okay. Yep. And legal counsel. They, that's the, for they had legal counsel. I also called the uh, state police. According to the state police, you well, didn't. I, I'm trying to think. Maybe it wasn't me. He recalls forcing Harder to leave the camp immediately. I thought we had escorted him out. No, pretty... he was allowed to stay in the trailer. Well, I dispute that. Yeah. I, yeah. Maybe up that day, but no, I, I don't. Two think days so. later, he was molesting another See, boy. I don't believe that. Uh, um, it was two days. I really don't. It was very hard for me. I didn't feel comfortable confronting him. The camp director's handwritten statement back then describes the steps he took. They include getting written statements from the boy and his mom, but nothing about calling police. Reports show state police were not notified until 11 days after the mom first told the scouts. I see you're fishing for something. No, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm looking for answers. I mean, I've, yeah. I've got a kid. But this is, I've not, got a kid. This is not the, exactly the way I, I remember it. Yeah. And do you know how angry I was at this guy? I have made a lifetime commitment from uh, being a school teacher to working for the Boy Scouts, to being a volunteer for 30 some years with mm -hmm. Boy Scouts, that my reputation meant everything to me. And that I like to think that I've left my kids a little bit better off. Um, through scouting, and that he tarnished that, and uh, I was very angry about that, and I, I wish very ill will to that man. What kind of impact did this have on your son? It was devastating, sadness. He was happy-go-lucky before that, and it was just sadness. Not really finding out or angry that way. It's just more sullen and upset. For me, it was just, uh, you know, I went through the doubt, you know, stages, obviously, you know, hey, what did I do? You know, you know, obviously, that everyone goes through, you know, did I bring it upon, did I not, you know, what about me made me that victim? He is a former Marine, married and divorced three times with three daughters, works for an aeronautics maintenance company and lives in North Carolina. He recalls seeing a counselor, but says his mother and grandmother are the ones who really got him through it. What would be the message you would want to send to it? Some, you know, someone who went through what you went through. Don't let it define you, you know, completely. Don't let it, you know, turn you into something that you shouldn't be. His mom sued the Boy Scouts back then, leading to an undisclosed settlement. I had hoped that it had made a difference, that other children would be safer. But after looking online and seeing how many lawsuits are still out there, and they're still in business, I don't think that they are taking any more care of our children. It's a hard thing to grow up with, knowing that you have to keep a secret, because mm -hmm. you feel that you've been violated, and you don't want people knowing you're violated, you've yes. been violated, yeah. because they look at you different. You don't want to be the pity. Yeah. You want just to be a normal person. Ken Strobel is 48, married with a daughter, works at a meat plant near his home in Quincy. He only recently told his wife of 21 years about the attack. It puts a lot of relief on him. Because now he knows that, you know what, he doesn't have to, you know, keep this in and that I'm not going to judge him any differently than I did the day before. The camp is now run by the YMCA with just a few reminders of its past. The former camp director is 68, living in the small town of Edmore. He still volunteers for the scouts. I mean, does the scouts owe them an apology for letting this happen? I mean, obviously, David Harder should not have been there. Well, I don't know about apology for letting it happen. I guess the apology would be, I'm sorry that it happened. He hopes the Boy Scouts can survive the scandal. I just put seven boys up here in this little town of Edmore. Became Eagle Scouts this last year. I'd like to think that uh, they walking away into being young men with some valuable skills and valuable life lessons. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah the program itself, it's only fallible by the people who are running it. As for Harder, he spent about a decade in prison. Then in 1998, six years after his release, he returned to prison for taking naked photos of four boys in Grand Rapids and molesting one of them. After his release in 2013, he became homeless, living in Grand Rapids, sometimes in a car, sometimes in a cheap motel. That went on for five years before moving with a friend into an apartment in Standale. His friend says Harder told him he had been molested as a child. That's what he told me by a family friend starting when he was 11. Yeah. And that went on for years. Well, I think he was just perpetuating the cycle. Harder was 77 when he died on September 22nd, a cerebral vascular disease. He's getting his justice. Now I feel that justice is truly served. The Attorney General's office says it has opened five criminal investigations into Boy Scout sexual abuse allegations in the state of Michigan. It's asking victims or anyone with information to call the AG's investigation hotline. I'm Target Investigator Ken Colker.